Dr. Rudy Newman, a historian and author working with Hertfordshire's Library Service. And in this series, we'll be revealing some of the important, obscure, and sometimes unusual stories to be found in Hertfordshire's history. In Tudor times, the Hatfield estate transformed from church land to a royal palace, becoming the birthplace of the Elizabethan age. Today, however, the Tudor building is largely secondary to the current Hatfield House, residence of the Marquis of Salisbury. Its origins, and how the estate became private property, stems from unlikely circumstances. During the reign of Elizabeth I, there were two chief ministers, William Cecil, Lord Burley, and after his death, his son Robert. Robert was the second son, so not gaining that title, but proved invaluable. Amongst his achievements were helping orchestrate the succession of James VI of Scotland, who became James I of England, and while continuing the Secretary of State role under James, he was the one who uncovered the gunpowder plot. It was James in 1605 who made Robert the first Earl of Salisbury. During the earliest years of James's reign, Robert was living in Chesant, in the house he inherited from his father, Tybalt's or Theobald's. This was one of the largest private estates in England at the time. On his journey south to London, James came to stay and was highly impressed. It was large, grand and fashionable. James visited several times, growing very enamoured of the place. Now, when James succeeded to the English throne, he acquired all of Elizabeth I's palaces, including that at Hatfield, built in the 1490s and now known as the Old Palace. James was keen to visit it, so in 1607 stayed with Cecil at Tybalt's and travelled over to Hatfield. Oh dear. What he found was a building over a hundred years old, completely out of fashion, and which had barely been lived in for decades. James hated it, uh, so turned to Cecil and said, let's swap. Cecil could hardly say no to the king, so Tybalt's became a royal palace and Hatfield a private estate. Cicely, however, was far from keen on the old palace himself, and having lost his home, looked to build a completely new house, replacing his lost Tybalt's. Three quarters of the old palace was demolished, the built materials recycled for the new building, with only the wing containing the great hall remaining. This is believed to have been saved as a memorial to the beginning of Elizabeth's reign there, although Robert's son would convert it into a stable block. The structure of the new house, designed by Robert Limming, with small involvement by Inigo Jones, was built in only four years, completed in 1611. Alongside the latest fashions and many ornate carvings, it also featured suites of rooms reserved for James and for his Queen, Anne of Denmark, Cecil with this important position intending for there to be many royal visits. Unfortunately, Robert Cecil, the first Earl, died in 1612, never properly living in his house. He is buried nearby at St Ethereda's Church in Hatfield. His son had little interest in politics, so while James did visit twice, the rooms did not see their full original purpose. In a distinct irony, later during the British Civil Wars, Hatfield House was all but ignored, while in the interregnum that followed, Tibbles was demolished by the government. Today, Hatfield House remains the seat of the Salisbury family, frequented by visitors and having been visited by virtually every monarch since James I. It is ironic to think that this, one of the finest stately homes in Britain, owes its origins to an impromptu house swap, or that quite so much national history, both then and in the centuries since, owe their roots to the two historic houses of Hatfield. If you would like to know more, there is plenty available and Hertfordshire libraries are a great place to start, with many online resources alongside material in your local library. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thanks for listening.